Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Now, before the break, uh, we were setting this up. Ewan McGregor said he would join us on the sofa tonight, but he would jump over our other guests on a motorbike by way of an exciting entrance. As you can see, we're all set. We've got Gary Chalizio and Alan Partridge lying down over there. Ewan, you're good on the bike there. You ready to go? Okay, let's do it. Three, two, one, go. piece of stunt work in the tank. That's an exciting start to the interview. Thank you for doing that. Wow. My pleasure. My you feel pleasure. good? Yeah, I feel good. Look great. Look great. Let's start that one. Let me take that off here. Oh, come on, play. Yeah. that way there. You're in the driver. You're in the driver. Come and take a seat. That was right, and thank you, of course, to uh, Gary and Talisa and uh, uh, Alan Partridge for taking part of this vlog. Oh, uh, uh, great to meet you, really. Huge, huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that okay? You're cool. Yeah, right? fine. I don't worry about this. No. <laughs> um, nice uh, to meet you, too. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah really. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, I've got to say, uh, the, I, th I actually think the first three Star Wars films are nowhere near as good as the three that you were in. That's yeah. interesting. And I know yeah. I'm, I'm probably the only person who thinks that. <laughs> Well, anyone says. No. Cheers. All right, cheers. 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 Alan Barkley, thank you. What a, a brave man, if not necessarily a very clever one. How about that for an entrance by a superstar actor on a show riding on a bike of people? Ewan McGregor, that was fabulous. What Thanks. a great start. Because we know, we know from having seen you on TV, that I know you love your motorcycling. I you do. do enjoy it. It's a hobby, it's a pursuit of yours. I do, I love it, yeah. You I love it. Work. I'm not allowed to do it when I'm working. There's an insurance clause that uh, means that I'm not su not supposed to ride a motorcycle while I'm making a movie. You came, so I don't. Off, it, you came off it once, in, I think you were in Scotland, you came off one pretty badly once, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. It was, my, yes, it, was a bad, it was a sad story. It was the first ride I'd ever had with my father, who, who learned to ride a motorcycle after me. And um, we went for about 300 miles, and at the very end of it, I came off really badly in front of him. But you were okay? You were... I was all right, yeah. But he shit himself. And my, my brother, <laughs> my, my brother who was, um, I think he was in Iraq, and a few days later, he read on the front page of one of the tabloids that I'd had a 180-mile-an-hour crash, <laughs> you know? And he was like, oh, my God, what happened? But anyway, probably yeah. 28 miles an 28 hour. 28 miles an hour, and, yeah. and your father's pants bore the brunt of yeah. the force of the shock. <laughs> yeah. did. Uh, you won't believe this when I tell you something here, but can you believe that Ewan McGregor is 40 years old? You, you look... You, you look about 28. You look... Oh, you're, you're very kind, thank you. you. Have you had any work done? Have you tightened anything up? Or have you had the neck done? Or pulled Only behind the ears? Nothing up above the neck. Nothing above the no. neck. <laughs> I had my ball sack done a little bit, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> Was that, was that, was that, I was getting a bit droopy. But. Was, that the, was that the Botox injection you had down there? No, I had that... it actually cut and re-stapled on. Yeah. It's called a scrotolectomy. Yeah. And it's not cheap either. But fun. But my balls look great now, so it's good. <laughs> you could eat your dinner off these balls, if yeah. that's good enough. Um, you had a, a bit of a wild period when you were first successful or not? Because now I know you're pretty calm. You, you don't drink at all. You don't, you don't go but crazy. I haven't done for a long, long time. Uh, no, not for 11 years or something. I did, you know, like anyone else, it was the 90s and I was quite... So you had a wild period, uh, yeah. but it wasn't too crazy, or were there periods where you didn't know where you were? No, you it had... was quite crazy sometimes, okay. but not, not, uh, not out of the ordinary. So, I mean, I wasn't alone, you know. It was during that kind of a post-train spotting phase where um, Oasis were huge and blur, and it was the mid-90s and the Brit, you know, Brit, it was very cool to be young and British. And, and especially, and to be young British and a star in possibly the hippest movie of the time. Because right. Trains, that yeah, must was, have been yeah. craziness. So it was an amazing time, and I, and I enjoyed myself a lot. But it just got to the point, it wasn't any real drama about it, it just got to the point where I, I couldn't keep it all, you know, I was, I was married, I had a kid, I was trying to... Had a good career and and I was trying to be a very good drinker as well. So it was just the it was the best one to go. You and you know you've got one of those careers where you do a, a lot of work here in the UK, kind of sometimes smaller movies, indie type movies. I know your your new movie is, I guess, a smaller piece. Small film, yeah, Small Perfect film. Sense, which uh, is coming out next Friday, October the seventh. It comes right. out. Um, well, let's talk about that now. Now, yeah. Grace, I was going to talk about other stuff first. Uh, it's a it's a very strange, very bold, very memorable premise for a movie. Describe it for people. Set it up. Well, it's a it's a, a love story essentially set against the backdrop of um, the series of epidemics that, that hit humankind, the whole of the world, are struck by these ep epidemics where the human race starts to lose its senses one by one. So everybody across the world experiences like a moment of extreme rage and afterwards they've lost their sense of, the first one to go is the sense of smell. 
and uh, this happens all, all around the world till the whole of humankind has lost its sense of smell. Then there's another one which is the sense of taste, hearing, and so forth. And um, I play a chef, so once the sense of smell and taste go, you know, we're a bit stuffed. Um, but I'm also an optimistic chef, and, uh, and, and I decide that we can carry on and people will still want to, you know, ca go out and, and enjoy each other's company, and so we start cooking in a very different way. And Ava Green, who's a very beautiful actress, who I play opposite in The Love Story, is an epidemiologist. Now, is there such a thing? There is. It's somebody who studies epidemiology. Well, I... <laughs> I'm so pleased that I said it right the first time. I had to say it again. <laughs> oh dear, there we are. So this is a Perfect Sense. It's out all over the UK on October the 7th. Have a look at this. I'm Michael. I work in the restaurant there. I'm a chef. Good for you. I'm pathetic. <laughs> what do you want from me? Just what your opinion. It could be environmental. It could be a toxin we know nothing about. There's nothing that matches anything we know. Don't panic. It's a crazy evening. Mando! Mando! They want us at the hospital. There's over 100 reported cases in England. They've got them in France, Italy, Spain. I think it's okay to panic now. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> How do you prepare for a movie like that in which losing the sense of smell or, or sight or taste, they're pretty big steps for a character in a movie. Yeah. Do you prepare for that? Do you try and prepare yourself by experiencing that, you know, bit. blindfolding yourself? Well, it's a difficult one, really. The hardest one to do was um, hearing, because in the scenes we played with each other, when you can't hear each other, it, we kept reacting to noises and sounds and so stuff. And we would had, do that, yeah, we kept, I guess. We kept having to remind each other, you, can't, you couldn't hear me say that, or... Because the idea is we can still make noise, or you might try to make noise as, as a yeah. human, but, but the other person wouldn't be able to hear it, so... You kind of know going in that these kind of movies aren't going to be... They're not going to be blockbusters. Maybe not, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. But maybe. If enough of you go and see it and then tell your friends... <laughs> I guess it's as simple as that. Yeah, you know what, you never they, know. we never know. I mean, no. you want people to see it, you want people to see your work and you yes. want people to see that film, but... No, no, I just love, I, I mean, I just love stories, really. And I, and I don't have a favourite, I suppose the smaller stuff is nicer. You know everybody on the crew. Whereas on a big film there's like maybe five or six hundred people on the set and you don't, you don't really know who anyone is and it's a bit less... Personal. It must be really weird, though, on a film like the Star Wars movies, where you go, not only is it a huge production and there's a legacy, but also some of the actors aren't even there. They're I mean, you're, there, you're yeah. performing a, a bat against, yeah. you know... And I had less creatures. and less as we went along. I don't know if they just didn't like me, or... or I, think they, <laughs> I think it's true to say they didn't like me. And um, the, as we went along, I had less and less people to work with. By, <laughs> by the third one, they sent me off on some chase through Gal and I can't even remember where I went, yeah, yeah. Some, somewhere, yeah. Tatooine or somewhere. Yeah, it wasn't chasing Tatooine. Uh, no? No. Well, you probably know where it was. I do know. O off I went on my own, and I spent three months in a you green stage. You were riding stage, a like giant this. lizard. Oh, yes, that's right, I did. Well, when you were filming the giant lizard... That looked a bit like your desk, yeah. in reality. But, but so you were riding on some of this. I, I rode something like your desk. So you were sitting on something like this, and people go, hey, yeah. the, 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 the worst moment for me <laughs> was the very end of this whole big Star Wars trilogy, I deliver the baby. Who is it I deliver? It's, you, uh, I deliver uh, Luke, Luke Skywalker, Luke, yeah. right? To Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. And hold on, hold on. Have you seen your films? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, was, it was quite a long time ago and it is difficult to follow. Yeah, exactly. So I arrived on set to deliver the baby, right? And I had some friends there and I said, come on, this is a big moment. I'm, I'm delivering Luke Skywalker to Uncle Peru, Aunt Peru and Uncle Owen. I'm, per I'm delivering, I'm deli it's a big moment this, yes. come and see. So I walked down and set my mates are behind the, the monitors there with George and whatever, and there's a green box, like this, like, just like this bit, right? And it's green, and the whole set is green. And I come on with a plastic baby wrapped in a towel, <laughs> and I'm like this, where's my, I arrived on a lizard or something. I went, <laughs> where's my thing, where's the thing I arrive on? And they went, there it is. <laughs> well, I had to get off it and stuff, so this is what I had to do. With my friends watching and George there, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't move or anything. There, no, there was no gimbal. I went like this, and then I had to go like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I went over. Oh, you know. I went over and gave them the baby, right? And, and I gave them the baby to Uncle Peru, Aunt, Aunt Peru, <laughs> Uncle, no, Uncle Owen, and Aunt Peru was on a big hill there, a green man. Yeah, waving. And, and, and she gives a wee look to Uncle Owen, and then I hear George's from the background going, look at the moons, look at the moons, and everyone goes like this, because no <laughs> nobody knows where they 
Parliament, and, uh, and then I'm walking back to my block, and I didn't know if he'd turned round or not, you know, so I just got back on and I went like that. Well, that's a marvellous, marvellous anecdote, and you know, that makes sense. That was it. Well, I didn't know why you rolled him off backwards at the end. <laughs> Ewan, we're going to take a break, uh, but I've got lots more I want to ask you. I know you've got right. a lot more you want to give. There's an awful lot more uh, I've got to give. Don't go true. away. Ewan McGregor will be here. We have music from CeeLo Green coming up after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Ewan McGregor is still here, ladies and gentlemen. And we have CeeLo Green coming up to play for us at the end of the show right over there. It's a great track. Um, one thing that I've always admired about you is the fact that you, you, you're you very comfortable with your own skin, with nudity in films, when, when the part demands it. You also seem very comfortable playing gay men. Yeah. And you're a straight man. Yes. Um, but you seem very comfortable, you've played a lot of gay men, uh, from, from my perspective, very convincingly. I've never found it that much of a problem. I don't mind it. I, I mean... Do you don't look forward to it? Or you like... No, you I don't. Look forward to it? I mean, I don't... If you found a man attractive, I, I think you probably find me quite attractive. Most did, of you, do. <laughs> did you ever... Ki did you kiss a man? I've never kissed a man knowingly. Do, do you want to kiss me now? <laughs> come on, go on. No, no, come, come on. on. I don't know whether I'm ready for it. I'm kiss. I'll be all right. Le on the cheek? No, no, on the lips. On the lips? Yeah. I'll do it on my terms. Okay. Okay. I tell you what, I can do it, but for me, if I was acting, I would need to think of a lady. And I'll, can I make you a tiny bit more like a lady? <laughs> Teresa, okay. let me borrow that, because I think if you're looking a little more, you know... No, no, I think she has to put it on. Oh, okay. I don't want you to put it on. I don't want to wear any, because I'm going to be... This, is from, this helps me psychologically, because I can think of you as a beautiful, short-haired <laughs> Scottish lady. <laughs> I'm saving this as a treat. I'll leave you lovely ladies too. That's... Thank you, Talitha. Can I be honest with you? Stand up. Can I be honest with you? That's quite a lot worse. <laughs> no. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a voyage of discovery for me as much as anything, uh, and it was a playful moment for you, and you're great to have you back. You're so really nice Ewan McGregor, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so good to have you, thank you. Thanks to all my guests, Ewan McGregor, of course, and the fabulous Alan Partridge. And